Good morning. Trinity Episcopal Cathedral, Sacramento, gathers, worships, and serves on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Nisanen people. We recognize and thank the indigenous stewards of this land, past, present, and future. With God's help, we agree to hold ourselves accountable to forming new and ongoing relationships of honor and respect with these lands and people. Thank you. Sing a new song. A song of praise to our God. Happy are they who trust in the Holy One.
Son, reveals his glory upon the holy mountain, <coughs> grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross, and to be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. That's fantastic. Are you, do you want to give? Yeah, there we go. Would you come and play John? <laughs> Is that okay? Here we go. Thank you for my, my troop. Um, so Jesus went up to a mountain to pray, and he took Peter, James, and John with him. Peter, James, and John, okay? And then when they were up on the mountain, Okay, I want you to close your eyes really tight right now for this little special effect. His face shone white, and his clothes shone white, whiter than any bleach could bleach them. Okay, you can open your eyes now. And the disciples were amazed. <laughs> Be amazed. <laughs> the disciples were amazed. And Peter said, this is so good. Could we, no, wait, I missed something out. Okay, one second. Can I get Anne to come and stand here? Can I get Bishop Barry to come and stand here? <laughs> Moses and Elijah came and stood and talked to Jesus. And the disciples saw them all talking and they thought this was amazing. And then, May, you have, uh, May are you going to come up and join us? Okay, you can come and be the extra disciple, okay? And Peter said, this is amazing. Can I build three tents so that Jesus and Moses and Elijah can all stay here together? And then that kind of fell on deaf ears and nobody went with a tent idea. Nobody was into the tents. Um, but then a cloud came and descended over all of them. It was kind of had a bright lining around it, but it was a bit of a dark cloud. And out of the cloud, a voice was heard that said, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. It was the voice of God. And the disciples got very scared. Can you be scared? Oh, that's right. And then the, the, uh, Moses and Elijah left. Thank you, Anne, for remembering the story. <laughs> and then the disciples were scared, and they were told, do not be afraid. And the cloud lifted. Moses and Elijah were gone, and Jesus was standing with his disciples. And he went down the mountain and said to them, don't tell anybody about what happened until I raised, I'm raised from the dead. Now, I wonder what you think about this story. What was your favorite part of the story? Lily, was it you? 
You are the star. <coughs> you don't even have a favorite part because all of it was your favorite part? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was trying. Um, what part of the story do you think we could leave out and still have all the story we need? Which part didn't we need? That's the thing to puzzle about. Oh, what do you think? We could have left out the part when Jesus told them not to tell anybody else. Okay. Um, and which part of the story was about you? Do you think? You know, I have a thought about that. It's interesting because to make uh, Jesus' face shine bright, I had to use a torch for my special effect, which means that his face was reflecting light, except in the actual story, I don't think there was any flashlight. There was no flashlight. His face was not reflecting light. The light was coming from him. But I think the disciples all around him were reflecting the light back off their faces because he was shining. And here's the thing that's about all of us. I think we're all asked to reflect the light of Christ in the world. His light's shining, and our faces can reflect Christ's light into the world and show everybody what his light is like. Will you think about shining with Christ's light in the world this week? Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, thank you so much for listening. We are going to go to chapel now, and I'm going to go with you. Um, any of the other children that would like to come with us to go to chapel, you can come with us. Let's go down the aisle and head on out. Thank you so much for my actors helping. <laughs> Extra actors. Hi hey guys, you want to come to chapel? Anyone to chapel? Please join me in reading Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has done in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him. Lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they who all who take refuge in him. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son 
my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Christ according to Matthew. Six days after Peter said that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
May your words be spoken, O Lord, and your words only be heard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This morning, I'd like to invite you into the arena of imagination. Come with me back to a little house church somewhere in Asia Minor. It's evening, almost 21 centuries ago. An old man named Peter sits in the midst of strangers and friends. They call themselves followers of the way. Peter has been on the circuit to similar communities for a long while now. And in the time of our story, he is resting with his friends before his last journey to Rome and to Nero's upside down cross of crucifixion. This little community where Peter felt so at home considered him a sage and they waited eagerly for his sporadic visits. Even though he sometimes rambled or had lapses in memory, Whenever he was among them, Peter's faithful listeners urged him again and again to tell them the stories of the one with whom he had shared a time of life so long ago, the one whose name gave them all an identity and a purpose. On the particular evening to which I've brought you, the common meal has just been concluded, the gathered group of faithful fill their wine cups again, and move in a semicircle around old Peter. <clears throat> On this occasion, he's been rather quiet through the communion meal and singing and prayers. Often these days, the old apostle seems to be withdrawing more and more into himself, seeking something or someone deep within. But the gentle brown eyes smile back now as his friends settle in. And when Dov, the youngest, asks for the story again of what happened on that sacred mountain, Peter smiles wryly to himself and he nods his head for a bit before beginning the tale of that amazing event. He told them first about what happened in, in Caesarea Philippi because for Peter, that always remained intricately connected to the events on the mountaintop. He told them about his confession that Jesus was the Messiah, didn't know where that came from. Then he told them about his absolute of the idea that Jesus would suffer and Jesus' anger at that and Peter's enduring confusion about that day. I believed him later though after the mountaintop, when the veil lifted and all his glory was revealed, we saw him as God saw him. There on that holy mountain, he was shown to us, God's holy one. And I too was transformed in the light of that glory. What if we could all see one another as God sees us? I was closer than ever before to understanding for just a little moment where my confession in that olive grove came from. I also saw that there on that mountaintop, his death was necessary, a necessary prelude to his real glory as God's Messiah. Sadly, I only saw that on the mountaintop and I didn't remember it later in Jerusalem at Passover. Johanna, in whose house church this little group met, saw the puzzled emotions traversing Peter's features in the pause that followed, and gently she asked, what else happened on that mountain, Peter? And almost as if the telling of events was too much, old Peter began a rocking motion. With his eyes shut, he began to chant. He began to chant the story, for that was the only way he could tell it. Moses, Elijah, 
the cloud. Jesus, but, but not Jesus. Oh, whiteness and no color. It was too bright even to look. Oh, and we were so afraid, Lord. Lord, it's well that we are here. If you wish, I'll make three booths, three tents. And then that terrible, sweet voice saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Calming down a bit, Peter went on. Then his touch. My own rabbi's healing hand was upon my head, and his peace chased away all fear. My teacher, my friend, no longer God's holy and fearsome one. That's who stood before us alone now. He helped us from the ground, and all he said was, tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. A long silence fell on the little group of listeners. The awe of the mountaintop had permeated the room because Peter's remembering had created the event again. And Dov thought to himself, it's so odd how the telling of these things makes it happen again, especially about this man, Jesus. Someone stirred and the old apostle's reverie was interrupted. He looked around and the cloud of memory covering his features was replaced by recognition of responsibility to those now present before him. Peter, the storyteller, gave way to Peter, the teacher, and he began to use the story of the mountaintop to help these younger ones understand what he had failed to see so long ago, that Jesus is indeed the Christ, that his reign is not of this world, that the transfiguration of one human being on a mountaintop was the key to the meaning of all life and the transformation of all history. Why Moses and Elijah? Peter fired his first question to the little group. Why were they with Jesus? As faithful Jews, they all knew the answer to that. Moses represents the law, said one. Elijah stands for all the prophets, said another. Pleased with themselves, the group looked expectantly to Peter for approval. But he turned their self-satisfaction back to them with a question they couldn't answer. Why were they with Jesus? When no one could answer, the impetuous old fisherman leaned forward and staccatoed out an understanding of Jesus' purpose that would later be woven into the stories of his life. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, and for us, he's greater than these. Moses and Elijah symbolize the old covenant that Yahweh made with our forebears, but Jesus is the sign and the source of a new relationship between God and God's people. In the new covenant, God gives his very self to us in the person of Jesus. We are his people, not by virtue of following a code, but by following a person who is no less than God. Do you understand this? The transfiguration on the mountain was when he briefly, briefly swung aside the veil and showed his truest self to us for the first time. And it wasn't just Jesus who was transformed on the mountain. It wasn't even James and John and me. It was the transfiguration of all history that began with that first covenant. Faith and identity came to us through Moses, but it was transformed through Jesus, who is the new covenant, and extends to you and to all who shall ever hear this story, if only you have faith to listen. Never forget the words of that terrible, sweet voice. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. 
Slowly, Peter's gnarled hand groped to find his near empty cup of wine. And looking into it as if he could read the depths of time, he called their evening to a close. They united their hearts in silent meditation until the old apostle prayed an ancient psalm with new beginning. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Amen. <clears throat> Gathering their things together, the little group of believers set out, each to their own home, filled with the wonder of his tale and the grace of old Peter's teaching. by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. on the face of all peoples, responding to the God of glory with, hear our prayer. The world, sent to witness the glory and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, for Megan, our bishop, for Michael, our presiding bishop and primate, for Barry and Jerry, our bishops retired, for this holy gathering, and for the people of God in every place. God of glory, hear our prayer. For this cathedral congregation, as we pre prepare for our annual meeting later today, for the congregation of the Church of the Epiphany, Vacaville, Cookie Clark, their deacon, and their supply clergy, and for the congregation of St. Michael and All Angels Church, Fort Bragg, and Randy Knudsen, their priest in charge. God of glory, for the nations of the earth and their leaders, remembering especially Joseph, our president, Gavin, our governor, Daryl, our mayor, and the legislative and judicial bodies at all levels of government for those nations shrouded by clouds of war and discord, that Christ's dominion of peace 
may dawn in splendor on their darkness. For what national and international concerns should we pray? God of glory, inspire us to cherish and protect the earth, the seas, and the sky, that, the, that generations to come may experience the love of God in nature's bounty and glory. God of glory, for those in danger and need, for the sick and suffering, for those whose lives have been disrupted by earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, and for the emergency responders who are aiding them. We pray especially for those with life-threatening illnesses and their caregivers. From the prayer list of the cathedral, we pray today for Liza, Jim, Steve, Dennis, Karen, Mary, Ruth, Tony, Amy, Jillian, Maja, Susan, John, Bruce, Debbie, President Jimmy Carter. Are there others for whom we may pray? God of glory. For this gathered community, that we who have received the message of the gospel may attend to it and as the shining light that illuminates the earth's darkness. God of glory. For those who have died and gone before the Lord in judgment, that the day of their salvation may dawn in eternal radiance. For the prayer list of the cathedral, we pray today for John Hine, Lynn Rivak, Tyree Nichols, Ed Meissenen, Peter Gallagher, Stephen Multinda, Nancy Lawrence, Bob Geis, Michael Purcell. Are there others? for whom we should pray. God of glory. God of glory, whose Son, the Beloved, was transfigured in dazzling light. Lead us from the high mountain to seek you in lowly places. Teach us to serve after Christ's example in peace and sacrificial love and strengthen us to be your faithful people in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. More peace always, right? And if you're new to us at Trinity, know that we have a coffee hour out in the courtyard just following the service. Also, if you're new, please check out our welcome table where you can get a name tag and get all hooked up with our e-news and everything going on, and we'd love to connect with you in that way. There is also a really full invitation to Holy Communion, which we'll enter into in a few moments after these announcements and prayers. And I invite you to read that because there's a lot in there that's really helpful. I'm just gonna provide a summary so that we all remember because we're doing it a little bit differently and new in this season. So if you would like to receive Holy Communion, you're welcome to come up 
at the invitation to uh, surrounding the altar or one of these side stations, which we call the east and the west transept. If you come to the altar, bread and wine will be available and all of the bread is gluten-free. If you would like to receive the bread, simply hold out your hands and uh, the minister will place the bread in your hands. At the altar, there'll be chalices of wine available as well and we'll invite you simply to sip from the chalice if you would like to receive. If you would like to not receive the wine, you can cross your hands over your chest and then the minister will pass you by knowing that communion in one kind is equally as valid as communion in two kinds. Also, if you would like just to receive a blessing, no bread or wine, you, could, you are invited to the altar or the side station. Simply cross your hands and you can receive a blessing in that way. If you would like to receive grape juice instead of wine, you're invited to the side stations to receive. And if you would like to receive communion from your seat, just simply try to give the usher a wave and they will um, make arrangements for that to happen. And the children are coming back in and we welcome them back. Hello, everyone. We hope you had a fun at chapel. And um, just a note to all of the children and parents here as well. Sunday school is canceled for today in lieu of the holiday, but business will resume as usual next Sunday. So please make note of that. Today is a special day and we're having our annual meeting which means we'll go over our whole full year of church and do some business together, which is really exciting and a highlight of our year. So all are welcome to that. And if you have not registered yet, please see the link in the, this last Thursday's e-news. And if you need assistance with connecting with the e-news, again, I'll direct you to the welcome table just outside. So a, a rundown of the schedule for this evening is that our meeting will start at four o'clock. Directly following the meeting at five o'clock, there'll be a fun social hour. And you're invited, if you would like, to bring a fun non-alcoholic beverage or a bottle of wine to share for that. And then after happy hour, we'll have dinner together. So please come out for that. If, um, just to backtrack a little bit, for communion, during today's communion, if you would like to receive a special prayers um, after you receive communion, you can go to this side, which is called the East Transept, and ministers will be available to offer prayers with you there. Believe it or not, Ash Wednesday is coming up this Wednesday, um, and we'll have lots of services for you to attend, starting at 7 a.m., uh, 12 p.m. with Bishop Megan preaching and presiding at that service, and then another one at 6 p.m. And if those aren't enough options for you, we'll also be offering Ashes to Go again, which is an opportunity to come by Trinity or St. Paul's downtown. St. Paul's will be offering Ashes to Go um, both outside their building and curbside, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we at Trinity will be doing the same thing from 11 to 2 p.m., either outside um, this main entrance or in the back as kind of a curbside drive-through. So please try to make it to one of those offerings and we hope, we hope to see you there. Lecture training is this next Saturday. If you are interested in learning how to read the lessons for us in church, Jay Leach is the person to see about that. And also if you'd like to just attend next Saturday from 10 to 12. Lastly, lots of announcements this morning. If you are interested in a new formation offering for the season of Lent, Dean Matthew is offering something very exciting and a little bit different for our Thursday night at the cathedral class. So the way Thursday nights work is we have worship starting at six, and then if you'd like to bring a brown bag lunch, you're welcome to partake in dinner together with the attendees. And then at seven o'clock, Dean Matthew will be offering an art studio time where all of the artists in the community, you can bring whatever media you are into, you can come and make art for the Stations of the Cross together. And if you're not an artist directly or you're just interested in learning or coming to talk, that's also welcome. So please come out for that. 
with all of that, <laughs> you, can, you can see your e-news if you missed any of it, but are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or occasions to give thanks this morning? Yes, Matthew. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to, again, thank everyone for sharing, because, you know, today would have been our dad's, uh, you know, 70th birthday, and uh, he was in Thank you, Matthew. Happy heavenly birthday to your dad and happy birthday to you. Anyone else? Yes, Julie, back there. Happy belated birthday. Oh, these February birthdays. Anyone in the back? Yes, lots in the back. We'll start at the my left and work to the right. Rick. <laughs> Oh, yes, your dad, we remember him, yes. My son turned 24 last month. Happy birthday to him. One more over here, yes. I become older on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. All right, let us pray as we lift up all these birthdays, anniversaries, and people we give thanks for and occasions we give thanks for. Gracious God, we lift up to you each one in this community. We lift up special days, we lift up birthdays, anniversaries, and all those we give thanks for. We also hold close those that we love, who we see no longer, and we, who we trust are abiding in you. We ask that you continue to walk with us and guide us in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
are true and loving God. In Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst forth from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time, Gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
gifts of God for the people of God.
Beloved community, we send Kelly Dunlap to Judith Lindahl, Susan Wilson to Bill Hustler, so that they may share this Holy Communion with these members of Trinity Cathedral. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. May they who receive it from you be strengthened and encouraged in this community we have together in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation and have united us with Christ and one another and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
cease to love and serve the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 